Welcome to the world of digital audio. In this segment, I'll be giving you a brief overview of digital audio. How exactly does digital audio work? Now, to convert analog audio to digital form, we use a process called sampling. What sampling does, it records the volume or voltage of audio at a very specific time and stores it in a file as a number. The number of samples per second is called a sample rate. According to the Nyquist-Shannon Sampling Theorem, the sampling rate needs to be twice as high as the maximum frequency which you want to reproduce. For instance, as you see on this figure, the waveform has been captured twice per period. See the red dots here? Now even though the sample points don't exactly match the high and low of the period, the frequency is still accurately represented in the recording, but the volume will be a little bit off. But what happens if there are fewer than two sample points per period taken? As you see here in blue, there is only one point per period and as a result, not only the original high frequency has been lost, but a new low frequency has been created. This nasty effect is called aliasing. Aliasing is bad news, but we've got some good news. Your software and hardware do take measures to prevent aliasing when recording and processing audio. The human ear is capable of detecting sound waves with a wide range of frequencies, ranging from between approximately 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. The sensations of these frequencies are commonly referred to as the pitch of sound. A high pitch sound corresponds to a high frequency and a low pitch sound corresponds to a low frequency. Amazingly, many people, especially those who have been musically trained, are capable of detecting as small a difference in frequency as 2 hertz between two separate sounds. When two sounds with a frequency difference of greater than 8 hertz are played simultaneously, most people are capable of detecting the presence of a complex sound wave pattern resulting from the interference and superposition of the two sound waves. Certain sound waves, when played simultaneously, will produce a particularly pleasant sensation when heard. These are said to be consonant. Such sound waves form the basis of intervals in music. For example, any two sounds whose frequencies make a 2 to 1 ratio are said to be separated by what's called an octave. The result is a particularly pleasant sound when heard. The piano key C4, which you probably know as middle C, resonates at about 261.626 hertz, or, you know, roughly 262 hertz. The C below, C3, resonates at about 131 hertz. And the C under that one, C2, resonates at 65.4. The lowest C on the piano, C1, resonates at 32.7 Hz. So here you can see this 2 to 1 ratio in action between the octaves of the C's on your piano. Other common musical intervals have their own frequency ratios between the two tones. In a fourth, the two tones operate at a 4 to 3 ratio. In a third, the ratio is 5 to 4. Speaking of octaves, the human hearing range fits in about 10 octaves. 
from around 20 hertz, which is lower than the lowest note on your piano, to about 20,000, which is a pretty darn high squeak. Going from 20 to 40, 40 to 80, 80 to 160, 160 to 320, 320 to 640, 640 to 1280, 1280 to 2560, 2560 to 5120, 5120 to 10,240, and 10,240 to 20,480. Human speech usually ranges from about 300 to 3,000 hertz, or in about three octaves. This is demonstrated by 300 to 600, 600 to 1200, 1200 to 2400. Another property of a sound wave is its bit depth. Bit depth refers to the number of binary digits in each sample. The higher the bit depth, the greater the dynamic range of the audio or the difference between the softest and the loudest passages. Most commonly used are 8-bit, 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit. Each bit gives us about 6 decibels of dynamic range. When we talk about amplitude resolution, or possible amplitude values, we're actually talking exponentially to a power of 2. Let me explain a little bit about the differences in quality between the bit depths I've mentioned above. 8-bit gives us 256 possible amplitude values and 0 to 48 decibels of dynamic range. 8-bit is commonly used on the internet to keep your file sizes small. 16-bit depth, 2 to the power of 16, offers you significantly greater possibilities. We get about 66,000 possible individual settings between your softest and loudest parts of the audio. Our dynamic range can go as low as minus 96 decibels. 16-bit resolution is what you use for music CDs. DVDs use an even higher quality bit depth. At 24 bits, each sample has more than 16 million possible amplitude values and can go as low as minus 144 decibels. Thirty-two bit, or two to the power of thirty-two, gets you roughly four point three billion settings. Your possible amplitude values can go as low as minus one hundred ninety-two decibels. One more note on bit depth. 16 and 24-bit files are represented with integer numbers, while 32-bit files are floating-point numbers. To avoid getting too technical here, let me just say that a floating-point number is one of many possible ways to represent a value with a small chunk of memory in your computer. Integers don't use decimals, but the floating point number gives you exactly this, a way to represent a value with a decimal point. In a nutshell, the 32-bit floating point files can more accurately represent very large or very small numbers. This accuracy provides better quality sound reproduction, extended dynamic range, and of course, more precise audio processing. We'll get into these topics in more detail in Level 2 of this tutorial. And finally, I'm often asked, how high should I set my volume during recording? The answer is, as loud as you can without clipping. 
When you go above zero decibels, you're entering the area of digital clipping and there really is no way to fix this. On the other hand, recording a really soft signal gives you a less accurate representation of the analog audio in digital form. This type of distortion is called a quantization error. Okay, now we've got a basic idea of how digital audio works. Now, let's get on with the fun part and actually start recording with Cubase.